Hey guys, welcome back to more political chatter. In this video, we will be doing yet another gubernatorial prediction for the midterms. Of course, I cover Senate a lot more than governors, um, but this time we will be looking at each uh, gubernatorial election this year, um, and we will be analyzing each race, and I will be giving um, a unbiased prediction on each one. So, um, obviously the national environment does slightly favor Republicans, um, I believe the generic ballot might be in the Democrats' favor, I should actually check up on that, I haven't looked at that in a while. But anyway, let's look at each state. So, first, we on this channel, we always start with safe Democratic states, so Hawaii, Josh Green, the lieutenant governor, will be the next governor there. Um, California, Gavin Newsom will win re-election by solid margin, um, Kathy Hochul in New York, Lily Zeldin isn't coming very close. Uh, let's see, in Massachusetts, Moore Healy is winning her first term, which is actually a flip because they have a Republican governor, Charlie Baker, right now. And in Illinois, we have J.B. Pritzker, who will win the election by a solid margin. Um, and I would still keep Colorado in this column, I believe. I had it likely in my last prediction, so this is the first change. But, um, I am changing it back to safe. Um, because of the national environment and just because of how popular Jared Polis is. So, oh, um, and in Maryland, the second flip, they also have a Republican governor. Um, Wes Moore will become the next governor of Maryland. So now let's go on to safe Republican states. Idaho, uh, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, um... Uh, Ohio, we have Mike DeWine. Iowa, we have Kim Reynolds. Uh, Vermont, we have um, Phil Scott. New Hampshire, we have Kristen Nunu. And that's going to be it. So um, that puts the Republicans at 20 seats, the Democrats at 13. Of course, you don't need a majority on the, uh, what's it called? Um, the Governor's Associate, the National Governor's Association, they don't really vote on anything, so that doesn't matter. Just each individual race matters for the state. So now let's head on to likely Democratic states. Um, are there any? Um, all right, oh, Connecticut and Rhode Island will both be likely um, in this election. You know, a long time ago, I actually had Bob Stefanowski winning in Connecticut. That was my prediction. However, if we're uh, really looking at it, uh, it might have been close in 2018, but Bob Stefanowski does not have that same kind of energy as he did in 2018. Um, this year, you know, he's really not doing uh, all that well, and plus it is Connecticut. It would be extremely hard for him to win in a Biden plus 20 state. Rhode Island, uh, it'll probably be close to being solid, but there is a very unpopular Democratic governor running for the election, Dan McKee, so that, you know, that's something, um, uh, let's see, where else do we stand, at this point, I, never mind, never mind, okay, um, yeah, that's gonna be it for the likely Democratic states, so now on to likely Republican states, I'm going to keep Texas in the likely Republican, uh, column, um, you know, but if we're looking at Beto rallies, they are packed, Okay, Beto is running a pretty good campaign. He is working hard, all right, and he did well in the debates. I believe he won the debate against Greg Abbott but pretty nearly. It's not like you crushed him or anything. Uh, it's just that Texas did go to Trump by five, and this is a, re a Republican favorite here, and uh, um, Hispanics in the South are shifting to the right a lot. We have to, to keep that in mind that, you know, that's some in California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas. It's going um, all throughout the Sun Belt. So I do believe that Greg Abbott will win re-election by a likely margin. South Carolina is only likely because Joe Cunningham, the Democratic nominee, is running a pretty good campaign. He's young, he's progressive, but he's running more of a national campaign than a state campaign. He's getting a lot of con contributions, mostly from TikTok. He's really popular on TikTok. But uh, Henry McMaster, the incumbent, will win re-election, I believe, by a likely margin. Um, let's see, going down to Florida, I still don't feel comfortable putting it in the safe column. I'm keeping it at a likely margin column. Ron DeSantis is extremely popular. Of course, he will be winning re-election, and Charlie Crist is a horrible nominee. The Democrats should have nominated, um, Nikki Freed, and she wouldn't 
I don't know, and narrowed it down to at least below 10 points. So, um, I think that Ron DeSantis will be winning by a likely margin this November. And I believe that Georgia, I'm going to keep that uh, projection there, Georgia will be likely for Brian Kemp. If it was David Perdue, this race would be a lean margin, but still go to the Republicans. Stacey Abrams is the Democratic nominee here. I really don't see her winning. I think that Brian Kemp will pull out with a win this November. Um, Let's see. I believe that will be it. Yes, it will. So now let's head on to lean Democratic states. Number one, I've kept it for so long, the state of Minnesota. I think will be lean for Tim Walls. Uh, the Republican opponent is Scott Jensen, but neither of them are, like, I don't know, cool or interesting people. So, I would give this to Tim Walls by lean margin. Very unknown governor, I feel. Anyway, uh, um, Michigan and Pennsylvania, I think, will be lean. In Michigan, we have Gretchen Whitmer, who will be winning. I had this as a likely state for a while, however... I feel that Tudor Dixon is, is kind of gaining just a little bit, and this would be extremely close to being likely, like really close to being a likely state, like right on the verge. But Tudor Dixon has made some gains um, in the following weeks, again, October surprise. But, you know, Gretchen Wimmer is definitely still winning this race. And in Pennsylvania, it would be likely because we have a election denier, um, Doug Mastriano as the Republican and the Attorney General Josh Shapiro as the Democrat. But I do believe that Oz um, coming very close to winning against Fetterman will slightly help Mastriano because of how the ballot is is positioned. I mean, if it's called voting down the ballot. If you're voting for Oz, then a lot of people will say, you know what, I'm just going to vote for Mastriano too because he's the other Republican. So I think that will slightly favor Mastriano, but um, but I guess you could say the same for Fetterman. But I see this as a lean race at this point. Maine will also be lean for Janet Mills. I don't really see Paula Page coming that close to victory. Um, um, let's see. The state of New Mexico will be lean for Michelle Lujan Grissom. Mark Ronchetti is just a great Republican op- opponent. He is just running a spectacular campaign, so I must make this lean state. He's really coming across as a moderate, and he's doing very well, and that will be it. So we're on to lean Republican states now. The first one will be the state of Wisconsin. I think that Tim Michaels will oust incumbent Democrat Tony Evers. Um, I believe that Tim Michaels will win. He's a Trump-endorsed Republican conservative, um, but just because a lot of his Tony Evers' approval rating is underwater. He is not popular in the state of Wisconsin. He just does not do much. Tim Michaels is running a fine campaign, but it's not anything spectacular. It's just that uh, Tony Evers is really unpopular, and people in Wisconsin do not like him. Um, any more lean Republican states? Um, oh, the state of Alaska, I believe, will be lean for Mike Dunleavy. Um... And this is because we do have a former governor, Bill Walker, running as an independent. He was a Republican governor. He was extremely popular. He is running again as an independent. This will take a lot of votes away from Mike Dunleavy, okay? And it will make um, the race somewhat competitive with the Democrat also in it, Mike Guerra. So, um, or less Guerra. So... I would make this lean margin a uh, lean margin race. It's pretty similar to Oregon, actually. We have an independent there. But yeah. And that will be it for lean Republican states. So now we are on to tilt states. These are the closest states. These mean this means that the race will be under one percent. And again, this is just my prediction. So those are the states of Oregon, Nevada, Arizona, and Kansas. A lot of tilt states. I usually don't have this many tilt states in my predictions. Um I guess we'll start off with Oregon, which I will stand by, and it it really might change in the days up to Election Day. I really think it will. But at this point, I'm keeping it going to Tina Kotek, the Democrat. I think that she will just narrowly be able to squeak out a win. This is, again, like Alaska because of an independent Betsy Johnson in this race, but she is stealing votes away from Christine Drazen, the Republican, and Tina Kotek. She's not just stealing them away. 
from Tina Kotek, but I feel that she is slightly more because Tina Kotek is progressive. Um, but yeah, and um, Christine Christine Drazen is running a great campaign. Also, we have to remember that coming across to a lot of suburban moms, that will be very important. I feel that that is not really recognized in this race, but yeah. So I think that Oregon will go to Tina Kotek and that she will become the next governor of Oregon. The next day is Nevada, and I do believe that Joe Lombardo will flip the state to the Republicans. I think that he will win by a tilt margin, winning less than 1%. He will defeat the incumbent, Steve Cecilak. Steve Cecilak, he very similar to Tony Evers here. Really just boring guy, doesn't really do much. Um, I don't see him winning a second term, to be honest. Um, what else can I say? Joe Lombardo. Joe Lombardo is a good candidate to run, okay? He's not like Carrie Lake or or um, uh, Doug Mastriano where he's saying all this crazy stuff. Even though he is Trump endorsed, he's not like going around saying the election was stolen. I mean, he is kind of. But he's not making his campaign about that. What he's doing is, um, you know, talking about inflation a lot like all Republicans do. But that will be effective this November if you're only talking about inflation. So, the next day is Arizona, and I've kept it like this for a while now. I think that Carrie Lake will narrowly win in the state of Arizona. Um, only still because Katie Hobbs refuses to debate her. I have no idea why. Katie Hobbs is, just, is about to lose this election because she will not debate an election denier. Carrie Lake is like the easiest group to gubernatorial candidate to debate, and she is not. She's going to come across as weak, um, to liberal, to Arizonans. They want a traditional, uh, conservative or a moderate, um, and they really are not going to be happy with either of the choices, but I think that saying that Arizona is still a Republican state, I think that the Republican turnout for Carrie Lake will be slightly high enough for her to squeak out a win. So the next state, or the last state, is the state of Kansas, and a state that I think will be the closest of this election cycle. And this one, I am changing my call. Not the margin, but the in-call, but the uh, call throughout. I'm going to give this race to Derek Schmidt, the Republican. I believe that Laura, that Laura Kelly will narrowly lose the election. Really sad. She is very popular, or not very popular, but she is a, um, above water. She is, um, you know, fairly popular. She is approved of in her state. But it's just that, you know, there are too many Republicans in Kansas for her to win again. And I know he's saying, well, she won in 2018. Well, in 2018, the Republican nominee was this anti-immigration, like, white nationalist. That was totally different. A lot of Republicans went for Laura Kelly. And yes, I know the abortion referendum passed, but without this crazy Republican nominee and a and an average Republican nominee instead, Derek Schmidt, and so many Republicans in Kansas, I don't see it possibly going to Laura. I mean, it's possible, obviously, but I don't see it going to Laura Kelly. I think that this one will be extremely close. And she is running a good campaign, but I just don't see it at this point in time. So thank you all for watching this video. Um, key races called were Nevada goes to Joe Lombardo, Arizona goes to Carrie Lake, Kansas goes to Laura Kelly, Oregon goes to Tina Kotek, New Mexico goes to um, uh, Michelle Lujan Grissom, Alaska goes to Mike Dunleavy, Wisconsin goes to Tim Michaels, Minnesota goes to uh, Tim Walls, Michigan goes to Gretchen Whitmer, Pennsylvania goes to Josh Shapiro, and Maine goes to Janet Mills. So, as I said, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to comment video ideas down below, and I will see you all next time. Thanks again.